was brought to you by The Vine on YouTube and The Storyteller on Facebook. Recovery by Roger Hansen. Chapter 3. A little more about me. My life in Arizona was pretty strange. We moved on to a dairy in a small town. It was located just south of Mesa and Apache Junction. I went to a small school that had elementary grades up to the 8th grade. Every morning we would gather behind the principal's office at the flagpole to say the Pledge of Allegiance. The school was so small that each grade only had one class, and all the teachers in the school would teach different grade levels each period. We didn't have a gymnasium while I was attending, they built one just after I was there. I had such a good advantage at that point if only I had taken the opportunity and used it. All I ever saw was desert, cotton fields, and mountains in all directions. I can remember the school bus every morning driving out to the Indian Reservation, picking a few of the students up for school. The bus stopped at the end of a dirt road and waited for them to walk up to the main road. The bus driver wasn't permitted to go down the dirt road, so the students had to walk for about a half mile to catch the bus. The rides to school were amazing in the spring. Pollen from the cactus would float up into the air in the morning hours, just as the sun came out, like cutting through an ocean with a knife. Every time I think of my friends walking on that dirt road in that small desert town, I think of those mornings on the bus. Two of those boys were brothers, and I can remember when I first moved to Arizona. They were two of my first friends, and I always seemed to like them. I'm not saying that things were peachy though, I did have a couple of kids that didn't like me, and they were big too. One boy was in the 8th grade, and his brother was in my grade, the 7th grade, and we didn't get along at all. I had a friend who was a tall skinny Indian kid, who always seemed to have my back. One day the coach had us play football, and skinny Olmi was going to be the center. So there I was in front of the oldest brother of the two and terrified. I was sure he was going to plow me over, and it wouldn't have been a surprise if that was the actual plan. I wasn't popular with my classmates, but when my team went into a huddle the quarterback had a plan. He told me, drop to your hands and knees the moment you hike the ball. Don't stay on your feet, just drop down onto the ground and stay there. I hiked the ball, dropped to my knees, and over me he went. The kid's knees buckled, and he almost went face first into the dirt. He was balanced enough to prevent that from happening, but it scared him, everyone laughed which embarrassed him, and his fear quickly turned to anger. We were fine for the last part of the day, but his anger was building, until the end of school. As I got onto the bus he and his brother approached me, wanting to fight. The oldest brother wanted his younger brother to fight me, and when he put his hands on me I pushed him back. That's when the fight started, we were on the bus within the aisles and swinging fists. The older brother saw that I had his brother on the floor, between my legs, while everyone was holding my arms while I was kicking him. He tried to come at me with a sucker punch, while I was pinned into a bus seat with my arms behind my back. My tall skinny Indian friend punched him in the face and knocked him back. Finally, the bus driver made it back to the fight and separated us. I had to go out of the back door, and the two brothers were told to go out of the front door. My friend, who had punched the oldest brother, didn't get into trouble. They said that he was involved, but he got out of it. Earlier that year he had hurt his arm, it was broken, and in a cast. He just said heck, I'm not involved in that, I have a cast on, and my arms broke, and they believed him. The rest of us got into trouble, but I can't remember what we had to do for punishment. Even when we fought like cats and dogs in school, we were still involved with each other outside of the classrooms. When we weren't in school it was a complete change from when we were in class. We somewhat got along when outside of class, but in school, we couldn't. I believe it was all about reputation and ego. Who was cool, who wasn't cool, and what would the girls think? Girls were always a problem for me and still are. 
one of those mysteries in my life that I could never really overcome. I have a severe fear of rejection, and no idea of where it came from. My Indian friend, who had my back in the school bus fight, had a sister that I liked, and she was friends with my oldest sister. I was too afraid to approach her, and I didn't have much luck at school dances because of my reputation. The girls didn't want much to do with me. I did like a few girls in the school, like this brunette girl who just moved into town and was nice to me when she first started school. As time went by, and she hung out with the other girls more, like another red-headed girl, who I also liked, she stopped talking to me altogether. Eventually, both girls' parents met and married, a happy ending to that story, but I didn't dare approach either girl. I also had a crush on a blonde-headed girl, but wouldn't approach her, and it was like that for me for all of my childhood. I always went out with girls who were a guarantee, and never girls that I had to make an effort towards being with. There was something about the desert, the cactus, foothills, pollen in the morning, hard surfaces with pockets of sand, to get stuck in. My best friend and I would hunt scorpions all the time. We jumped on his scooter, which we had a bike tire in the front of, instead of a scooter tire, and rode out to the foothills to find them. The scooter was fun, it had pedals and constantly leaked gas from the carburetor. The gas dripped onto the spark plug, but didn't bother us, and the front tire would give out and collapse while riding it. We went face first into the dirt, then got off of the scooter, replaced the bike tire with a spare we had brought with us, tightened the crank which would come loose with a ratchet, and off to find scorpions we would go. When we got to the foothills on the reservation, we started checking under old mattresses, trash, and under rocks, where scorpions usually hid. We used sticks to get them into jars, and after catching five or six of them we stopped looking. We would bring them home, and then burn them with gasoline, just to see them burn. Looking back, I can see how little respect I ever had for even the desert. The irrigation canal next to where we lived was almost the size of the interstate, with a smooth surface of hard dirt on its sides. The canal sides were slanted making it easy to get in and out of. The canal was used for flood control, so it was almost always dry. The kids on the dairy farm would play in it, using the canal as a football field, riding motorcycles in it, and ramping over its sides. I can remember helping my friend rebuild an old motorcycle, until he got a Honda 250. We rode all over creation on that motorcycle, ramping and riding as fast as we could. Before I was 16, my dad allowed me the use of his old Pontiac on the dairy, to go back and forth to the barn to get milk. On the way there and back I would race around the dairy, sliding around every corner, and driving on the edge of the flood canal's slanted edge. It ran along the side of the dairy. I first drove slowly over the canal's slanted edge until I was driving at an angle on its side, then sped up. I thought I was cool until I got cocky, trying to go to the bottom of the canal's edge. I got stuck in the sand and had to get it pulled out. You would think getting stuck was enough, but I got cocky again. My friend and I stole the Pontiac and drove to Awatuki, which is on the other side of Phoenix, to see my friend's girlfriend. Little did we know when we left, that a dog was in the back seat. The Pontiac's ignition was messed up, making it possible for the key to coming out, without the ignition locking. We pushed the car away from the trailers, and drove until we got to Awatuki. When arriving, I turned the ignition off accidentally, and locked the ignition. I tore into the steering column trying to start the car, but that didn't work. We ended up walking back to the dairy with a German Shepherd. It took four hours just to get to Mesa where we made a phone call, and our parents came and got us. My friend didn't get in trouble, but I had to get my driver's permit and work with my dad milking cows. I can remember when we first moved to Arizona, and my dad got his job on that dairy. Before my friends moved on to the dairy, I was bored and alone. I built a raft because I saw an irrigation ditch running next to the flood canal by our trailer. After the raft was built, I took it to the irrigation ditch. It was concrete and V-shaped. When someone fell into the irrigation ditch, getting out of it was hard. At the time, I didn't know because I was new to Arizona. The raft was made out of forklift planks that were lying around and empty iodine barrels. 
I placed the barrels under the planks, fastened with a rope. When I was finished, I drug the raft to a bridge next to the ditch, and down onto the side of the irrigation canal. I used a rope connected to my self-made raft to slowly lower the raft into the water. Seeing the raft sitting on the water, everything seemed to be going all right, so I edged my leg out onto the raft. The raft began to move, causing me to slip, and the raft to move out from under me. I quickly found myself in the water. Like I said before, the canal was V-shaped and its surface was slick. The first thought in my head was I'm going to drown. My heartbeat pumped and adrenaline rushed as I thought to myself that I was going to die. I scratched the surface of the canal trying to climb, but couldn't, the surface was too slick, and my hands were wet. I gathered my senses and found a crack running up the surface of the concrete, slowly pulling myself out of the canal, and onto the surface above. Even though that scared me, it didn't stop me. The neighbor kids and I would go to that same spot to swim, and I could soon get in, and out of the canal without a problem. It became our swimming pool on really hot days. We heard of people drowning in the canals, but it didn't matter to us. We were always getting chased out of it. When we went to the reservation, we also climbed foothills. I can remember one foothill with slips and slopes when we first started. The hill had a trail, or at least it seemed like a trail, at first, but then disappeared when we got about two-thirds of the way up. When we got close to the top, the foothill turned into slippery rocks. When my friend and I first climbed that hill, I was afraid, but still climbed to the top. Slipping and sliding on loose rocks, and figuring out where the best place was to grab and maneuver to. When I got in trouble for stealing my dad's Pontiac, he made me milk cows as a punishment. I had to herd the cows into a holding pen, as an electric fence pushed them forward into the pit where we milked them. First, I sprayed the udders with a water hose and iodine. After spraying the udders with iodine, I used paper towels to wipe the iodine off and clean the tits. Walking down the pit, I would pull the milk pumps off of their mounts. I would check each cow for bad milk by squeezing one of their nipples, looking for chunks in the milk. I would push a button and wait for a light on the milk pump to turn green afterward, then placing the suction cups of the milk pump on the cow's tits. I had to learn how to do this routine until it became a habit. Being the first time I had experienced milking cows in my life, it was exciting, but I eventually became bored with it. I listened to music while working, and it was always classic rock and roll. The electric fence bothered me, how it would touch the cow's back. My dad would always say that's nature, things are the way they are for a reason. My dad's boss put a basketball hoop in front of the barn, where everyone went to play. It was located right in front of the milk room, the room that holds the milk tank. There were many nights when all of the kids hung out in front of the barn playing basketball. Some of us knew how to play and some didn't, but we had fun. I had a friend who always wanted me to play. He was one of the Mexican kids and couldn't speak English too well. He was born with polio as a baby, causing one of his legs to be shorter than the other. That kid loved basketball and thought of me as a good friend. How people treated Mexicans in that area and how I was treated. The lonely seemed to stick together and he was a friend to me. My dad milked cows and his dad was in charge of the hospital barn, the barn for the sick cows. Giving the cows the right amount of food, medicine, and vitamins in their diet. My friend's brother and I would steal the dairy's golf cart, used by my dad's boss and his employees to drive around the dairy. It only took the tab of a soda can to turn the ignition on, so we would wait until 10 o'clock at night and took it for joy rides. Like the car, we got it stuck a few times and damaged the top of the cart too. When we first moved on the dairy, I remembered how the boss's son had a crush on my sister. He would come over to visit for the whole first summer we lived there. I liked him but soon he stopped coming over to hang out, and never really said why he stopped. He invited me and my friend, to a desert party once, and we had fun. I ended up standing on the bonfire, while getting drunk and riding the branch used for a bull ride. I talked to girls, and by the end of the night crawled through my sister's window to get into the trailer we were living in. 
Hanging on my sister's coattail, I hung out with her boyfriends who always tried to teach me how to be cool. One of her boyfriends invited me and my brother over to his house for a pool party and to watch movies. He tried to strangle his mom with a foam cord one day when he freaked out and his mom ended up being the victim. He always tried to get me to stand up for myself. He knew how I was being bullied by those two brothers at school. He knew all of us but wanted to stay out of it and still tried to teach me how to fight. He was a good guy. My sister's friends and their parents needed a place to stay and one night my sister went to my parents with a sob story. Soon they moved in. The two girls seemed all right, but the parents were weird. They slept in an old van parked behind our trailer and the girls stayed in my sister's room. My brother and I couldn't get along, so my little sister stayed in his room, and I stayed in the room with my older sister and her friends. I was able to touch both my sister's friends' boobs, and one of them let me touch a little more. Nothing came out of it though, we only messed around while lying next to each other on the bed. The youngest girl was the one I liked, and she didn't feel the same about me. In the end, they ended up being good friends. The youngest girl ended up being a lesbian, and I didn't hear anything about the oldest daughter. The father went back to prison and died shortly after he got out. The mother was diagnosed with cancer, but ended up passing away because of a car accident. One night in the cottonseed, where we used to party, I made a fool of myself. I said something about the youngest girl to her older sister, and she punched me in the nose. I bled like a stuffed pig and cried like a baby then apologized because I forgot what I was talking about, and so did they. That old coat tail didn't stop there, I eventually found my first girlfriend through my sister, and she was a prize. Always coming over on the weekends telling me how bad her life was. How she didn't like her family, but she had a nice home with a swimming pool, and a straight-laced family. She complained so much, it eventually got on my nerves, and I told her I didn't want to see her anymore. She would cry, I changed my mind, and it was always this way in all of my relationships. Every female I dated, always complained about how bad their lives were. I had another crush, a Mexican girl who lived just five trailers down from me, whose brother I hung out with all the time. Her dad took us to the lake to swim, while he would spearfish alone. It was illegal but letting minors drink while he did it, was illegal too. I spent a lot of time with her and her brother, and never dared to tell her how much I liked her. I'm one of those guys who don't like the work, and the chase was too much. Things in school got worse in my second year at the school. Other kids started getting along with me, because I was an 8th grader. I was a big fish in the little pond, with long nights and sleeping in the class. I would lay down under my desk and go to sleep and get into fights, because I wanted to. I didn't have a problem with them. One kid told me he thought he could beat me up, so I had to find out. My two arch enemies, the two brothers that I constantly fought with the year before, were gone. I had to find excitement it seemed until I was kicked out of school for depancing a girl and showing off. I liked her, she was a cute blonde girl, and again I didn't know how to act with girls, it ended up embarrassing her too. My dad's boss got tired of the trouble we kids were getting into on his dairy and gave my dad an ultimatum. Quit or move off the dairy. My dad moved us to a house next to the Air Force Base, on the other side of town. The house had a horse pin and a covered driveway, where my dad had his yard sale under. He bought a lot of stuff and started a year-round yard sale, and I had to watch it since I didn't go to school. I had to cover the tables with tarps and uncover them in the morning every day. My dad's cousin visited, telling me about antiques and the difference between white milk glass and green glass. We moved into this house and my dad had great plans, but I was still hanging on to my sister's coattail. I met one of her high school friends who lived close by. His parents had a fish farm close to where we lived, and he came over to visit all the time. It was to the point where it freaked my parents out, because they thought for sure my sister was dating a black guy, yet they weren't prejudiced of course. My sister's friend knew a girl whose father was in the Air Force and visited her all the time. We would always go on to the base by telling the gate guards we were visiting her, and they would always let us in. 
We would go to the perimeter road to watch jets do touch and go on the Air Force runways. Every morning the sirens for wake up would go off on the base and we lived next to it. It was annoying for the longest time, but as time passed I got used to it. By this time too, I had just gotten into trouble for stealing my dad's car and was told to get my permit to drive. I got it and I was learning to drive. An older guy became my sister's boyfriend and my parents wanted me to go on dates with them. They let me smoke weed and get drunk every weekend to get me out of the way. At the end of the night, they had to roll me out of the back of the truck bed because I was so drunk and high. Before leaving the house, my sister's boyfriend would go out to the back of our house to burn one with me. My sister was 16 and he was in his late 20s, but they stayed together for quite a while though. This was brought to you by The Vine on YouTube and The Storyteller on Facebook. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.